Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Living Faith. Super excited to worship. Let's stand. God, we ask that you flood this place as we lift your name on high, God. Our desire is to uplift you, Jesus, to glorify you and to draw closer to you, God. We ask that this be the case this morning as we worship you, Jesus. Sing these words, what can wash away my sin? In what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. That again, what can wash away? In a white kid. Oh, 
your grace so free washes over me you have made me new now begins with you your endless oh and your endless love pouring down our lives you have made me new now begins with you We sing of your glory in this place, Jesus. Your holiness. The sacrifice you made for us. Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But in Jesus arose with the freedom in hell. That's when death was arrested, my life began. Oh, when death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you, Jesus. And your endless love pouring down our life. You have made new night begins with the ends we're free yes we're free free forever we're free come join the song of all the redeemed yes we're free for your blood Jesus shed for us God undeserving sinners Jesus now have an opportunity to be in a relationship with the most high God let's sing of his goodness this morning so bless the Lord my soul 
shines for all to see your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King. Oh, Jesus, the King of kings. Oh, the fear that held us at sin, the fear that held us and now gives away to him who is. Our peace, his final breath upon that cross is now alive in me. In your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ. death on our behalf, Jesus, and by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat, the resurrected King is resurrecting me, in your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me by your spirit of the rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory. The
Christ are by your spirit yeah. and by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrected happy and joyful souls celebrating because of your victory, God, that you've invited us to be a part of this morning, Jesus. We're so thankful, God, and we give you worship, Jesus. We're in awe of you, the one who conquered death on our behalf. Jesus, we thank you and we worship you and we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Take your seats. Take your seats. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I see your grace, Jesus, powerful grace. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed oh, When we've been here ten thousand years Bright shining eyes, the sun. We know the days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amen.
as we launch uh, a series of messages about uh, giving, about uh, the needy, about what God, God's will is concerning these matters, I want to start by uh, clearing up a misconception in the church about biblical prosperity. You mention prosperity and people will just go crazy. You must be one of those prosperity preachers. Uh, pros the gospel of prosperity, right, Pastor? Yeah, it is. The gospel will prosper you. When you hear and believe in that gospel message and, and you're saved, you just prospered. When you go from death to life, how many know that's an increase? Hmm? When you go from lack to abundance, <laughs> we're prospering big time. So uh, I, I think it's been spoiled by some uh, bringing a prosperity thinking into the church that it's all, it's all about the money. And teens, off you go. And it's not all about the money. It's all about people. It's all about God's blessing. Look at all these young people. This church is prospering in, with young people. Wanting to come to church, learning about Jesus, and going out and sharing their faith. That's prospering. Hmm. Divine prosperity is God's will. I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's God's will for every believer in Christ. Now, I have to say every believer in Christ and not just every believer because the word believe has become relative. What are you believing in? See, you, just because somebody says, yeah, I'm a believer, well, uh, ask him, a believer in what? I'm a believer in Muhammad. I'm a believer in uh, Buddha. Well, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. That's who I'm talking about. That's a true believer, by the way. Look at Jeremiah 29, 11. So you're telling me, Pastor, every believer in Christ uh, is, is, is in line for God's divine prosperity. Yeah, just God's will for every believer to prosper. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this in the NIV. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So God has a plan to what? To prosper you, to give you a hope and a future, not to harm you, but to prosper you. So we see it's God's plan. He wants to prosper you. He desires to prosper you, prosper you, where the devil wants to keep you in poverty, spiritually poor, the Bible says. And God wants to make you spiritually rich. That's prospering. All right. Uh, Proverbs 13.21 out of the NIV. Proverbs 13.21, the NIV, please. Misfortune pursues the sinner, but prosperity is the reward of the righteous. So prosperity is the reward of the righteous. So basically, the righteous will prosper. Is that a fair statement? God will prosper the righteous. Who are the righteous? Believers in Christ. Right? Uh, look at 2 Corinthians 5.21. Let's just confirm. Let's just get this on the table. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Say we are the righteousness of of Christ, of, of God in Christ. All right. All right, all right, all right. That's a fact. In Christ, because Christ is r the righteousness of God. So in Christ, we become righteous. And what does he do? How does he reward the righteous? With his prosperity. Every one of you in Christ here this morning. Look at Proverbs 28, 25, New King James. Anybody here uses the New King James? A few people. Well, more than 830. Wow, that's great. It's a good version. It's, it's really well. Uh, Proverbs 28, 25 says, He who is of a proud heart stirs up strife, but he who trusts in the Lord will be prospered. So those that trust in God, anybody here trust in God? Trust and believe for the same. If you believe in God, you trust in God. If you trust in God, you believe in God. Right? The Lord will be prospered. Those who trust in God will be prospered. That's a promise. Look at this scripture. I'm just laying the foundation right now. Then we'll get into this 
deeper. Psalm 35, 27, and 28. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Yeah. Lift your hands and say, let the Lord be magnified. <laughs> amen and amen. A and then what does it say? It says, which hath pleasure, God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant or servants. The believer in Christ is the servant of God. We are the servants of God. And it gives God pleasure to prosper his servants, to prosper the righteous, to prosper those in Christ. Amen. We're on the same page so far? Yeah. You know, you can't say no. I'm showing you the word. Biblical prosperity defined, it means good things. Not bad things, but good things. It's the blessing of God. The blessing of God is his prosperity poured out upon us. Uh, it's peace. In fact, in, the, in, in uh, Hebrew, and receive the peace of God. That's prosperity. Not going crazy out of your mind with fear and worry, but there's peace like a river. You're prospering in the things of God. It means wellness, wholeness, advancement, success. Health, mm -hmm. it means abundance, no lack. It means wealth, riches. It means soundness, all spirit, soul, and body. God's prosperity touches man's spirit, riches. It means soundness, all spirit, soul, and body. God's prosperity touches man's spirit, soul, and body. The wholeness of triune man. Amen. You ought to say amen. amen. That means I believe it. I believe it. Look at, uh, oh, that's a great scripture. Look at Proverbs 10, 22. Proverbs 10, 22. You to help somebody else. The Bible says he gives you bread to eat. In other words, he provides income for you to meet your needs. But yet he gives you seed to sow. That's the increase. God will never ask you to sow your bread, but he asks you to sow the seed that he gives you. Are you with me? When people come up to me and they say, I want to take my bread, my house payment, and give it for alms, I'll say, who told you that? I don't see that in the gives you seed. He expects you to sow it. And guess what? When you sow it, it comes back manyfold. To do what? To sow some more. And to sow some more. Hallelujah. That's the principles of the kingdom. Now, next week, I'll be talking about sowing and reaping. The laws of sowing and reaping. You don't want to miss it. In fact, my special guest will be Farmer John. Farmer John will be here next week. Oh, you're going to love it, saints. The laws of sowing and reaping. And guess what? When you sow it, it comes back manyfold. To do what? To sow some more. And to sow some more. Hallelujah. That's the principles of the kingdom. Now, next week, I'll be talking about sowing and reaping. The laws of sowing and reaping. You don't want to miss it. In fact, my special guest will be Farmer John. Farmer John will be here next week. Oh, you're going to love it, saints. The laws of sowing and reaping. Now, let's talk about this. It comes back manyfold. To do what? To sow some more. And to sow some more. Hallelujah. That's the principles of the kingdom. Now, next week... I'll be talking about sowing and reaping, the laws of sowing and reaping. You don't want to miss it. In fact, my special guest will be Farmer John. Farmer John will be here next week. Oh, you're going to love it, saints. The laws of sowing and reaping. Now, let's talk about this. The blessing of the Lord or the prosperity to do what? To sow some more. 
and to sow some more. Hallelujah. That's the principles of the kingdom. Now, next week, I'll be talking about sowing and reaping, the laws of sowing and reaping. You don't want to miss it. In fact, my special guest will be Farmer John. Farmer John will be here next week. Oh, you're going to love it, saints. The laws of sowing and reaping. Now, let's talk about this. The blessing of the Lord or the prosperity of the Lord uh, maketh, uh, maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Check this out. Proverbs 22, 4. Proverbs 22, 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Riches, honor, and life. That's prosperity. Or by what? Humility and the fear of the Lord. Yeah, God will prosper you. You stay humble. You follow him. You fear God. You love God. You will prosper. Now let's talk about this thing called riches. You know, there is something in the Bible called the riches of his glory. That isn't talking about a million dollars. That's talking about spiritual things. How about the riches of his grace? It's in there. That's not talking about a mansion on earth. That's talking about mansions in heaven because of his grace. Now, am, am I knocking or am I coming against this idea of God blessing you with material riches? No, of course not. But when you make it all about that, it's wrong. I can't handle it. I got to take uh, uh, NyQuil. Because it's wrong. It's a one sided message, it's a one sided gospel. Check this out. This is going to blow you away. Luke 16 11, the NIV. Don't you want balance? Yeah, he wants to bless you with a nice car. He wants to bless you with a nice house. He wants to bless you. But he also has blessed you with his eternal riches in glory through his son, Jesus Christ. Does that account for anything? Everything. Luke 16, 11, check this out. This kind of explains what I'm talking about here. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth. He's talking about worldly wealth. Keep going. Who will trust you with true riches? Well, true riches certainly isn't worldly wealth. What is true riches? It's what matters. It's the things of heaven. It's the things of God. It's the anointing. It's the glory. It's the power. Those are the riches, true riches. The worldly riches, he, he lets us be good stewards of to correctly handle it. And if you can't correctly handle tithing, alms, and these other things in the Bible, then you mishandle. How can he trust you with true riches if you can't get the money thing right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is it true? He can't handle something as simple as finances? How is he going to trust you with something really important, true riches, and prosper you that way? God's prospering this ministry because we handle the mammon the way he wants us to. We give, we give, we give. The Bible talks about being spirit, soul, and body. Is this true? But that's what happens after salvation. What happens before salvation? We, before salvation, are body, soul, and spirit. We're led by the flesh because the spirit is dead to God. Is this true? I need three helpers. These three right here. Come here. It's okay. It won't hurt. You in the middle. Look out that way. You're right behind her close, like a choo-choo train. Come here. Okay? Okay? You ready? <laughs> B 
body, soul, and spirit. There and there. Now walk forward, just like the train. Well, who's leading? Who's leading? The flesh is leading. The spirit is dead to God. No Jesus. No regeneration. And the soul is having a hard time making decisions because the flesh is always trying to lead the way. The Bible says it's don't be led by the flesh. Be led by the spirit. But when you come to know Jesus, something happens. About face. About face. Isn't that typical of the soul? I ain't doing what God wants me to do. <laughs> After Jesus, now you're what? The spirit is alive to God and now leads the way. Spirit, soul, and body. There you go. There you go. Start walking toward the cross. Thank you very much, kids. <laughs> he just all the look this he gave me. About face. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> well, it's true, isn't it? Have you ever thought of it that way? So now we're led by the Spirit. We prosper. When you're led by the Spirit, you prosper in the things of God. Amen, Pastor. But God's prosperity doesn't come without cause. What causes genuine biblical prosperity? The Word, the Word of God. Let's look at Second Chronicles 2020. Second Chronicles 2020 says what? And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. So when you believe his prophets, which is the word, they speak the word, they were God's mouthpiece on earth because they did not have the complete Bible as we have today. When you believe the word of the prophets, so shall ye prosper. Look at Psalm 1, verse 2 and 3. Psalm 1, verse 2 and 3 But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and so night. So in the law or in the word, you meditate day and night. How many know meditating in God's word every day will prosper you spirit, soul, and body? Will prosper your mind, your spirit, and your physical body? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, what is it, three or five? It says, those that find my words, they'll be health to their body and life to their souls. I think that's called prospering. And the next verse. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And who's the he? The one who does what? Meditates on God's word day and night, right? Go ahead. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. A person that meditates in God's word, whatever he does will prosper. That's powerful, saints. Do you believe when I'm talking? Amen. Well, it's true. God wants to prosper you and bless you. Isaiah 55, 11 is really interesting. It's very interesting, insightful, thought-provoking. Check this out. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So God's word will prosper, will increase, will bring advancement to the thing or things whereto God sends it. God sent his word to heal us. So listen, see if this makes sense to you. When you speak God's word because you believe it in your heart, 
and you speak God's word, you send it to that thing that seems to be a problem, a trouble, whether it's your health, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your family, whether it's your finances, and you speak God's word to it, you can expect what you speak to to prosper in Jesus' mighty name. So speak to your children for them to prosper, spirit, soul, and body. Speak to your health, to your immune system, to prosper, to do well, to be healthy. Speak to it. God's word. And the Bible says it will prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. You send it. God's word is truly in you when you speak it. It's just as if Jesus is speaking it himself. When it's spoken in faith. And it will accomplish what you speak to. Speak to that mountain. Be thou removed. Speak to your finances. Speak to your marriage. Prosper. Prosper in Jesus' name. Get well in Jesus' name. Increase in Jesus' name. Anybody have a problem with what I'm talking about here? It's all word. And it works. Hallelujah. Oh, let me show you something here. Oh, this is great. Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Speaking of longevity of life. Uh, check this out. <laughs> if they, God's people, will obey and serve him, the Lord, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. So here's a promise. If you obey the word of God, you serve God, you can expect to spend your days in prosperity, wellness, peace, increase, advancement, health, and your years in pleasures. You know, oftentimes Hollywood would take a, a, a good saying or a good something out of the Bible and then use it, and, and all of a sudden it's a big deal, and they think it really came from the movie makers, and it didn't. One is uh, about a sci-fi motion picture, Star Trek. Have you heard of it? And that Vulcan says, uh, what does he say? He says, live long and prosper. God got it first right here. You live long and prosper when you obey and serve God. Turn to somebody and say, live long and prosper. Now, you just spoke life to that person that might be struggling. You're speaking to their innermost beating that might be fading away or even dying. And you're saying, prosper, live long in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is this crazy or what? Genesis 39. Oh, I've got to. Do I have time? We've got to get this. Genesis 39, 1 through 5, please. Talking about Joseph. You remember it was Joseph, the, the, <coughs> the brother who the other brothers threw in the pit and, and left uh, for dead, changed their minds, sold them into slavery. Some Bedouins or people going by. He ends up being bought by Potiphar, an unbeliever, a pagan officer. And this is what happens. Where are you? Go. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. R read that again. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. Even in captivity. 
even in captivity, God blessed him and prospered him because that's where God wanted him at this time. It was training for reigning. He prospered him. So even in captivity, even men and women in prison can prosper in the Lord and come out changed. Anybody attest to that? Come on. Keep going. Three. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. So all that he did, all that Joseph did prospered, and the pagan or the, un, uh, the unhealthy one, the spiritually poor one, saw this and said, hmm, this is something's going on here. Keep going. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Prospered the Egyptian's house. Go ahead. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Now check this out. For Joseph's sake, because he was a prosperous man in the household of Potiphar, God blessed Potiphar's household the ungodly, the unrighteous, because of Joseph. So think about it for a minute. Where you're working, you're the righteousness of God. That business you're working at should be prospering and doing well. I think every business in town ought to hire two or three Christians just for the, just for the, the benefit of the doubt. Are you a Christian? You're hired. Now start prospering. However you do that. <laughs> and if they won't give you a raise, saying, well, bye-bye. Did you see that? Are you with me on that? Is that wild or what? God blessed Potiphar's house, increased it, overflowed it. Prosperity came to Potiphar, and he wasn't even a believer. Why? Because of Joseph. So in your house... As a believer, as the righteous, you can expect your household to prosper in Jesus' name. Your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Because you, sir, are a prosperous man, they too will benefit from it. You too are a prosperous woman, the rest will prosper as, as a result. Hallelujah. Look at this, Proverbs eleven twenty five, 25. NIV, please. Proverbs eleven twenty five, 25, talking about giving. Giving will prosper you, big time. We'll get into that with the laws of sowing and reaping next week. Go ahead. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. So it says a generous man, a giving man, a giving woman, Will what? Benefit, prosper, increase, experience peace. Riches will be untold. He who refreshes others, and that's what we're about to do here with food, blankets, coats, refresh others, we ourselves will be refreshed as much or more. In Jesus' name, we will prosper. I think that's one of the reasons why we're coming up on our 20th anniversary of living faith. Because, because of the giving attitude of this ministry. Not perfect all the time, of course. But I tell you, that giving, that heart of giving goes a long way with God. A long way with God. That's his heart. Remember, he gave his son. God's a giver. You emulate God when you give. Oh, you don't want to hear this. Giving is important. Look at one other scripture before I close. Maybe two scriptures. Well, maybe three. 
Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, please. Just King James is fine. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. There's two kinds of giving explained or demonstrated, two kinds of giving. The first one is what? When you honor the Lord with your substance, with your wealth, what you have, that's an offering, alms. And then with the first fruits of all your increase. What's the first fruits? Tithing. That's tithing. It, you give the first fruits of your income. In other words, if $100 comes in, in that week, you give God the first tenth, $10. You honor God that way. I don't know about you. I'd rather have 90% uh, prospering than 100% cursed. That 90% will go a whole lot more than you ever dreamed of if you obey God and serve Him. In Jesus' name. The last one is prayer. How many know prayer will prosper your life? Anytime you make contact with God, you're prospering tapping into the life force and you will prosper even more and more. It's like being a tree planted by the water. You'll flourish. Look at 3 John verse 2, New King James please. Beloved, I wish above all things well, that's that not New King prosper. James, but that's okay. Read that one, then go to New King James, Rhonda. And be in health thy soul prosper. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. How many things? All things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So we see God wants you to prosper in all things and your health and your soul. Spirit, soul, and body. You mean I can pray for for my soul to prosper? Yes, you can pray. For my body to prosper? Yeah, we just talked about that. Speak the word to it. Speak the word to that sick son. By your stripes, you said, and you promised, Lord, by your stripes we are healed. I pray you prosper my son's health now and heal him. Psalm 118.25. Now we're going to close. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Send now prosperity. Stand on your feet as you lift your hands. We're going to ask for that prosperity to come, biblical prosperity to come. Salvation would come to your unsaved loved ones, that they would prosper in that way. Financial breakthrough would come to those that are struggling right now. Prosperity come, I pray in Jesus' name. Come upon us, flow in us, throw out, flow out of us to others, I pray. I pray for the prospering of our children. I pray for the prospering of our businesses. I pray for the prospering of our, uh, our church in Jesus' mighty name. Send prosperity now. Lift your hands and say, send prosperity now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay. God bless you. Hope to see you.